Lewis is grown by a company called Sigital, which does a lot in application security space. And when I was in Rome at the application security conference, I spotted that these guys released a very new cool tool for developers. So if you're a developer, can you raise your hand please so I can see how many of you are developers? Okay guys, so this is for you, because you're going to be, you're going to be surprised by this. Um, and yeah, I love it for this. Okay, so this is Jax, and I'm gonna, now we're going to walk away. And uh, so yeah, so hi, I'm Lewis. I'm obviously, as I said, I'm from a company called, company called Sigital. And today I'm going to walk through um, um, a tool called Jax. It's basically a static code analysis tool, but it's basically primarily built for new applications like JavaScript frameworks and you know, JavaScript and Java frameworks. So who am I? I said before, security consultant. I've been at Sigital for about a year. Uh, I'm a PhD candidate at Leeds Beckett University, uh, looking into browser, client-side security, mainly around JavaScript frameworks. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I pretty much only, in my spare time, look at web security, and if you would like to follow me on Twitter, it's at Lewis Adam. So, JAX as a whole, it's a, a lightning-class um, GitHub analysis tool. Um, from what I've seen and what I've tested, it can scan most repos in about under 20 seconds. It takes away from the generic um, kind of mindset where we have these um, tools that essentially give you red, red flags to go, hey, this is really wrong, we shouldn't be doing this. We try and offer comprehensive security best practices. Uh, we also then offer um, downloadable proven code fixes, not for all of the issues because some of them are quite complex. And, and um, you might need to mess around with the business logic or make some changes yourself. But there's some which are, you know, for example, if you've uh, disabled um, a certain attribute that we know is bad, we actually give you the code changes. It also introduces in-production Slack discussions. So straight away, you can add your team into the repo that you're working on. You can load up Slack and go, hey, um, have a look at this issue. And whenever you choose an issue, it will automatically like, make a new, new room for you guys to talk in. And, you know, hopefully uh, this will help people be a bit more secure in a couple of minutes because, as I said before, it's lightning fast, it will scan repos quickly, offers um, downloadable, hopefully proven code fixes, and if they're wrong, please let us know, but they shouldn't be. So at the moment, this is um, currently what it covers. So HappyJS, uh, MongoDB, Node.js Express, and for Java Spring. The way we're trying to do it is we're trying to talk the way developers talk. So we're not just going to say, hey, you've got reflective cross-site scripting. We're going to try and do it in categories. So you know, data validation, data protection. And for things like happy.js, we even have things like authentication and state management. Things which Jack's going to be soon introducing is AngularJS, uh, React, and Backbone, and Socket.io. Uh, I would like to talk to you at some point about AngularJS, but <laughs> we'll go on from there. So let's get on with the demo and basically see Jax in action. So this is um, generally when you first create an account, it will ask you to like um, connect to your GitHub repo. And um, so if I go to my profile and my connections, you'll see that um, with at the moment I'm currently logged in with my personal GitHub account. I'm also um, connected to a Slack um, conversation group. So if I create a new project and I go, uh, let's just call it OWASP1 because I was testing this earlier just to make sure it works. So we create a new project and you get dropped in. And the way we kind of do it is by not saying, you know, you have critical issues, we have recommendations and improvements. So I will add a few repositories from my, because it, so obviously it integrates with Git. You can directly um, sync up with your GitHub account and add any kind of repository, public or private. Obviously, you have to give authorization to the tool for it to be able to see them. <coughs> so we'll put in AngularJS. Um, the one that I'm probably going to talk about today is DB, DB Dam Vulnerable Node application and the uh, MongoDB Bootstrap. So as I said, I like to say that it's quite fast at analyzing um, repos. So if we analyze this now, they're now going away and being analyzed. And I don't know the whole um, back-end way because I don't actually work for Codescope. But supposedly, they essentially set things in containers. Every time you want to scan a new repo, it will spin up a new container, scan it there, close it down, and give you the resources. So there you go. It's scanned AngularJS, 
DVNA and an Express Mongo configuration wasn't too, too slow, hopefully. So then it has, um, like I said before, best practices and patches. So, oh, okay, I thought I was in trouble there. So then if you open them up, if, maybe I can try and zoom in um, on the sides. So you have things like, you know, data validation, and inside these, um, let's see now because I'm too far in, it'll bring back guidance pages, and it will tell you exactly where the problem is on the source. It'll also, you know, give you some examples of what is good, what is bad. And then, for example, like I said, we have patches, you know, for example, it will say, hey, why don't you add a secure attribute to your actual application? So then, as you can see here, it, that if you go down to the bottom, and you can download a patch, and obviously you can integrate it into Git, and then you can patch it on either like a branch or like a fork of your repository. And today, I asked my friend to basically take a look at my, um, my patch and said, hey, can you deploy it? So this is the guidance of this issue specifically, which is essentially you know, um, the secure attribute for a cookie, it was basically turned off. So then it goes straight to GitHub. This is the pull request, and you know, as you can see, we then enabled it. So I mean, overall, this is a really cool <coughs> tool, specifically for JavaScript, and the newer like, stacks, like a lot of people use Spring, specifically in Java. Oh, and yeah, as I said before, so, if you want to talk about an issue, you can add people into the team, for example, and you can actually discuss the guidance, and straight away it will spin up a new room for, within Slack, and it you know, names it by the issue, and then you can go, you know, hey John, can you please take a look at this, and I suppose there's a fix in this, does it work? And you guys can test it out. So, why do I like Jax personally? It's completely free, um, you know, at the moment, you can just sync up your Git, if you wanted to, you could import loads of, like hundreds of thousands of repos you know, from, from Guild to see if it's an actually, actually any good. It's still very new, it's only been out for about three months now, so it's still very much a new tool, but I'm really hoping it's going to be you know, something really cool in the future. So, the reason why I also like it is it's not aggressive to developers. Yellow is best practices and blue is patch. You know, before, people are just getting sheltered up, but you know, you've got to fix five instances of XSS. This tries to give you a deep understanding of what the issue is. It tries to give you code fixes where possible, and you know, it integrates with Git, which is great, and it supports JavaScript. I um, don't want to talk or, or rat on other people's tools, but at the moment, a lot of other scanners don't really look into JavaScript, or well, they try to, but they kind of fail at certain hurdles. So that was pretty much the demo. Hopefully I didn't go through, too, go through it too quickly, but if you want to, and um, try it out on your personal open source projects first, sign up at jacks.codescope.com. You can either authenticate through Git or you can create an account. And if you have any bugs or suggestions for the tool, but there's more features to come. So at the moment it only works with Git. There's soon going to be like Bitbucket, SVN, and other you know, um, managers. There's going to be new frameworks. I said like there's going to be JavaScript. Uh, for like AngularJS client site and the Backbone.js, all those kind of um, frameworks. And there's also going to be application visualization, which is going to be quite nice. So at the moment, you kind of just get, you get a new code stack, and you don't really know what is actually working where. The, the tool is actually going to start building issues saying, hey, you know, these, these things are talking to this function, and you can start to get a visible, vis uh, visible representation. So that's pretty much it. Hopefully you like the look of Jax. You know, go and check it out at jax.coscope.com. And if you have any issues, go and shout to the team. There you go. Thank you very much. Hey developers, two, three months old. Questions, please. Does it support Node.js? Yeah. Any more questions? I think so. Yeah. Yes. Code is code. Sorry. What's code is code? You said that you don't work for Codescope. So I, Codescope was a part of Sigital once, once in the blue moon, but then essentially it's now our sister company. We've branched off, they're technically their own company. Um, and so we collaborate with um, Codescope. So they build the engines for these tools. They also work on the e-learning platforms and stuff. And we essentially offer them, um, you know, from because obviously we're security consultants, we do this research you know, day in, day out. We basically offer the guidance, then the team go away and builds it. So it's quite cool. It's a nice way to kind of work together. Take what we learned from the, from the obviously from the 
the growth of their work, and then they go away and build it from engines. Mm, finding bugs in our identity and um, access management is a bold claim. Could you? I don't want to go to scope. <laughs> 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 have, you, have you seen any examples of that? Um, not myself, I've only used the tool for specifically, um, at the moment I'm helping with the AngularJS stuff, so we're kind of working on that. But um, unfortunately I don't know. You should definitely message support and say, please explain your claim. You know, so it's at the end. Message these guys, shout at them saying, I think you're false, please give me some examples. And then I'm sure they're saying, saying, saying it's full. Yeah. Oh yeah, no, this is great though. I mean, they're supposed to be one of the brand new JavaScript scanning tools, so give them as much hell as you can. So I had in with the guys last week, and I spent about you know the whole thing trying to convince them to open source the engine. But oh. mainly, what happened? The, my Don't question to you. Did say on Twitter that it's, it's going to be open source. So I don't but it's know. still yeah. free. It's going to stay. But free it's, it's not. Um, my question is about custom rules. Mm -hmm. Where can you write it? How does it support custom rules? Because we need to teach the engine where the stuff is, or else it's, it's never really going to work properly. I agree. Um, like uh, I wish. I could so can you write custom rules? I don't know. Uh, I haven't seen the code base, so I don't know, unfortunately. I just give the research. Um, yeah, so I would like to know, but I, I'm, not, I'm not entirely sure. It's code scripts, maybe. So. <laughs> Any more questions? No more questions? Okay, thanks so much, Liz. Thank you. Thank you.